What's up guys? I'm just back with a few late night thoughts after today's test and I wanted to make sure that I communicate things clearly about this kitchen test because I had my kids with me and <laughs> I got a bit distracted running around. But <clears throat> to be clear, of all the combat kitchen tests that I've done, I would say that this Coastal Camper Nitro V actually was first place, like the best that I have tested for the pumpkin splitting and peeling. I'd say it kind of shares that first place with the Topps Silent Hero. The top Silent Hero had a bit more weight, and so it split the pumpkin very satisfyingly, but I don't, I didn't notice one of them being tremendously better than the other. They both cut a clean line, very deep, and were, were a joy to use. So, Tie for first with pumpkin splitting. First place, definitely, bar none. Like I literally just used my kitchen knife to peel the rest of the pumpkin and it was not as enjoyable as this because the edge is sharper on this. So like m my kitchen knife, like that hasn't been put through 90 minutes of chopping test. I think that for the apple cut, it's probably second place after my kitchen knife. My kitchen knife, when I did that in the very first combat kitchen test, probably did the apple slice just a hair more satisfyingly than this Nitro V. Um, but second place, it was better than any of the other ones, for sure. I think for the carrot, it was number one above everything, including my kitchen knife, because as I said, the edge I think bent or wasn't so good after the pumpkin chopping on my kitchen knife and the peeling the carrot wasn't as nice as with this Nitro V in the Coastal Camper. For the tomato, it was definitely number one of all of the Combat Kitchen episodes that I've done. Now, if you sort of consider the chop, the thousand chop tests that I've done as part of the same sort of arena, then um, it was probably second place in terms of its best number and the way that it did the tomato slice to the thousand chop test of my K-Bar Becker BK7. After a thousand chops, the K-Bar went into the tomato a little bit more easily and it retained that 200, 230 grams best edge, probably mostly due to how tremendously thick it is behind the edge and the fact that we were using it for like its intended use and not pushing it to the utter limit of hardness and use. So I'm 100% satisfied with the result. I guess one more thing that I wanted to mention is just a word about toughness and why I'm interested in the results from this and what some of my thoughts sort of are on that. So I've got some of Laren Thomas's Sharpie data here where he does toughness testing of different steels. This is on the website knifesteelnerds.com. I don't have any rights to it. It's all credit to Laren Thomas and his research. But if you look at the line for Nitro V, that light blue line, you can see at um, now do note that on the x-axis down below, that's hardness, okay? So at 61.2 or so, Nitro V is actually tougher than MagnaCut. For whatever reason, for whatever metallurgical reason, if you take them up to 63 and a half, then at that point, MagnaCut is actually tougher than Nitro V. But do note that if you consider this is around 63 Rockwell, so follow that line up, we've got somewhere around the 12.5, maybe 13 foot-pounds of torque that it took before it broke in the Sharpie tester. So at around 13, if you scan your way backwards, that's literally tougher than S30, S35VN is at any hardness level that Laren tested it. <laughs> it's literally 63 Rockwell Nitro V is tougher than 61 Rockwell S35VN. It's tougher than 57.5 HRC LMAX. It's tougher than 60.5 Rockwell CTS XHP. 
I mean, the list goes on, right? So you can see there's sort of this tier of high alloy steels down at the bottom, and then there's your low, low alloy steels up at the top. And the reason that I've been interested in this and working together with Wade is because you can actually harden some of these simpler steels up into the high range of Rockwell hardness, but they retain a level of toughness even greater than many of the super steels do at a lower level of hardness. And because of that, when the steel matrix is really hard, it will mimic some of the positive aspects of the super steels in, in, in the sense that it will have a growing amount of edge stability and wear resistance and these different things. And it will just sharpen like a harder steel. You know, it will, it will act like a harder steel because it is harder, <laughs> but it actually will retain a, a toughness that is even greater than, than most of those really, really high carbide volume steels. And what's cool about that is that you can actually get a knife with a, a balance, so you get some of the payoff of like, if you were to add extra carbon or extra alloy, you, you get a little bit of like that payoff, but you can actually use it for a broader range of tasks because it retains enough toughness to function in harsher impact tasks. And that's really the heart of why I, I wanted to do this chop test and this kitchen test. And that's really, I'm, I'm pleased that like from the beginning until now, there is literally no visible edge damage at all. If we pop over to 1095, this is Laren, one of Laren's other graphs. So if we pop over to 1095, you see that at 57 Rockwell, 1095 tests at about 10 foot pounds of pressure. You can see that a 1095 knife at 57 Rockwell is actually not as tough as a stainless steel Nitro V knife at 63 Rockwell. And you can just imagine the, the difference in application and feel and sharpening response and the different qualities that you could gain out of that. That's why I thought this would be an interesting test to do. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching this follow-up video. And for now, I'll just say peace out from the Home Slice. Take care, guys.